So the last time I have done a pump review was probably six months ago. And the pump that we reviewed was this pump right here. So if you remember back, this was the two horsepower Viver well pump that I did a test on. It was 115 volt. And I rated that 9 out of a 10 uh, for basically the cost effectiveness of that pump. Uh, it's around 180 bucks, and it performed really well. But it only got about 124 PSI. But um, for the price point, it was actually pretty good. But I cannot speak to the longevity of a pump that you only pay $180 for. So today, I decided from all the comments that were listed on that video... Why don't you do some pump tests on pumps that you actually do install every day? So I decided I was going to go ahead and make a series with all the pumps that you see behind me. We're going to test them individually, one by one, video after video. So today, what we are going to do, we are going to test a 3-inch Grumpus SQ250. It is a one horsepower, 15 gallon a minute, three inch submersible well pump. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about the setup before we go ahead and start the process. So this right here is going to be my testing apparatus. And in the last video, I've changed it slightly just to where we can monitor a few more aspects of the system. But just like in the previous video, I have a 200 PSI gauge and we can meter it right here with a one inch ball valve. Then it's gonna go through a couple of elbows, just like any other system, there's always gonna be 90s and elbows and T's in the system. Then we're gonna go through a flow gauge. This is just a digital electronic fuel meter that goes on the end of any you know fuel nozzle. And this way we can actually track how many gallons we're actually flowing through. And if I monitor it, and turn the system on for exactly 60 seconds after zeroing this out it will actually tell me how many gallons per minute we're actually sending through the pump so that's just a cool little extra add-on feature now if we come over here we have our one horsepower Grumpus SQ250 15 gallon a minute pump here this is our flow chart also a graph so the importance of the chart is something that you have to understand before you just go buy a pump and decide you're going to put it in a well. Because you need to know what it's capable of doing. And over here, we have our, <clears throat> our PSI, our shutoff. Most pressure switches operate between 40 and 60. And then if we come all the way here to the top of the chart, this is the depth that the pump will be set at. So if you look, 280, that'll be 280 feet deep in the well... 180 feet, 100 feet, and so on and so forth. So today we are testing the 15SQ10-250. Now we know that the majority of systems shut off at 60 PSI. So if we come all the way over here on a 15 gallon a minute pump, it stops right here, 3.5. That means 3.5 gallons per minute and if we go all the way up, we're at 280 feet. So theoretically, this pump is capable of pumping a maximum depth of 280 feet, but it can only give you 3.5 gallons per minute at that depth. Now, just because it says it produces 3.5 gallons per minute, if the water level was drawn all the way down to 280 foot, now we come over here to the same exact pump chart and we look at the pump chart. The pump chart says that it'll pump all the way to 420 feet before it gives you zero gallons per minute. But the difference in that is that that is zero pressure. So it's giving you, let's just, let's go back here to two. So it's giving you two gallons per minute at 400 feet but if we come over here and we look at the chart it's not able to build the pressure because that is what's important so if we go over here to say 20 psi and you're at 8.8 .8 gallons per minute that is at 340 feet 
So that's not good. That means the pump's going to sit down there and run and run and run and run and not be able to cut itself off until the water level theoretically gets back over here into the mid 200 range. And then it will start operating like it typically should in the 12.4 to 11 gallons per minute. Now remember, this is a 15 gallon a minute pump. That's what we want it to produce the majority of the time. So a 15 gallon a minute pump is not a pump that you want to put down at 300 or 350 or 400 feet. That would be a 7 gallon a minute pump or a 10 gallon a minute pump. The deeper you set a pump, the lower the gallons per minute on that pump theoretically should be. Now if we come over here, I wrote this down when I originally got these. At 60 foot of head, it can produce 19 gallons a minute. Now remember, this is a 15 gallon a minute pump. But if the water level is only at 60 foot, it can actually produce more than 15 gallons a minute. Now once you get to 180 feet, that's when it kind of equalizes out and produces 15 gallons per minute. At 300 feet, it's only giving you 5 gallons per minute, but it's still able to cut the pressure switch off. So what I tell my customers, if you want to buy a 15 gallon a minute pump, don't put this pump any deeper than 200 feet in the well. If you want to go to 300 feet, then you move over here to the 1 horsepower SQ290 because it can do the same but it has more grunt capability. It can lift water from a deeper depth. Now, this one right here, see it's 14 gallons a minute at 60 foot, where this one over here was 19 gallons per minute at 60 foot. So this pump right here is better at a deeper depth, but this pump right here will flow more water at a shallower depth. If we actually move over here to the SQ190, it will actually flow 30 gallons a minute at 40 feet, 23 gallons a minute at 100 feet. But this is a shallow well pump for irrigation, like down in Florida or something like that, where you're going to be using for uh, multi-zone sprinkler heads and whatnot. But this pump wouldn't go in very deep. But enough talking about pumps. Let's go ahead and I'm going to show you my pumping station. So I've kind of made this up and it was very similar last time but i've made a few changes put this little white background here so we can easily uh, distinguish the gauge i made me a pull disconnect back here for 240 volts i'm going to go ahead and wire in my uh, my pump to this so i can manually cut it on and off and i've got my cord here and this has got a 240 volt plug so what i'm going to do now i'm going to go ahead and get this all hooked up we're going to get the pump threaded on we're going to set it in here and uh, we're going to we're going to start the pump test process. Nice and tight. All right. Next thing to do, set it in the tank. Now, I made this chart to help you understand head pressure. So this right here is basically, we can consider this either where we set the pump in the well, or this is the water level in the well. So if, if let's just say hypothetically, we set a pump at 300 feet, and we've drawn the water level down all the way to 299 feet, because the well doesn't make a lot of water and we've almost ran it dry. Now, right at the top of the pump, 300 feet equals 130 PSI of head pressure. Now, you have to factor in the fact that you have roughly a 50 PSI pressure switch. So you need to add 50 PSI to that number. So at 300 feet, if you've drawn the water level down that deep, you actually have 180 PSI inside the pipe right above the pump. So that means your pump has to be able to build 180 PSI if it wants to satisfy a pressure switch if the water level is drawn all the way down near the pump. So that's what this idea here is. And what we're going to do, we're going to use this pressure gauge here to determine what a pump's maximum depth capability is. Alright, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open our valve. And now I'm going to turn the power on. 
We come over here, we can actually monitor the flow. So see right now the flow rate at the bottom is 19.2 gallons per minute. That is really awesome. What I love about the Grumpus pumps is the slow start feature. So if you noticed, it didn't jerk when it kicked on. It did it nice and smooth. That's something that you have to worry about with 4-inch pumps. But if you get a Grumpus pump, the built-in slow start feature is really a nice selling point. Come over here, we'll look at the water. Got a nice flow. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start cracking the ball valve. And we're going to slowly bring up the head pressure in the pump. We're gonna say we're at a hundred. We're gonna try to get it down to about the 200 mark. So let's try to get it to about 85. So that's about roughly it right there. So now you have to take in mind that we don't have any pressure on this. That's 200 feet open-ended open-ended we're still flowing around 16 gallons per minute so theoretically we have to add 50 psi to that so let's add 50 psi to 86.6 so that's going to be 136 psi and that will have satisfied a pressure switch and pump from 200 feet so we are at roughly 136 PSI right there. And we come over here and we look at the flow gauge. The flow gauge is saying that it's flowing roughly 12 gallons per minute. Now let's go ahead and go back to the chart and see what it says. Because we are right now, based off pressure, we are at 200 feet of head pressure and we have 50 psi additional on the system so that is typical operating pressure of your system if the water level was drawn down to 200 feet so let's take a look at the chart so we got 11.9 or we got 12 and that was at 50 psi and 200 feet so we're going to go to 200 feet and we're gonna come down and we're right here because this is our pump and then we're gonna to go to 50 PSI which is here and the chart let's make sure we're on yeah we're on 200 so the chart says at 50 PSI it will flow 13.7 then we come over here it's 12.7 so this chart it's giving you a little bit more than than actuality you know real-time processes but it's actually very very close so if we come down here to the 60 psi and we get you know 12.4 11.3 that's actually more in line with exactly what we got so 200 feet plus the 60 psi cutoff so that theoretically is what we got I'm very very happy with the results of this pump now we're going to go ahead we're going to start the process again and we're going to see what the maximum pressure we can reach out of this Grumpus SQ250. We're going to go ahead and open the valve and then we're going to take our 240 volt plug and plug it in. All right, so now we go back. Got a little bit of a glare on it. We're right back to 19.2 gallons per minute. 
beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna start slowing down the volume and increasing the head pressure. So we were already at 136. We're gonna go back to that. We're gonna go to a little bit to about 140. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna look at the flow gauge. Flow gauge says we're at 11. That's still pretty good. We're gonna go up to 160. Okay, now we're at 160. Now we've slowed down to 7.6, 7.7. Let me go to. Okay, we have reached pretty much our limit. 175 is what I'm going to call our limit because we look over here and we have limited it to 1.5 gallons per minute of flow. Now if you want to see what 1.5 gallons per minute of flow look like, that's what it looks like. That would fill up one and a half milk jugs in a minute and a half. So that is very, very little. 1.5, 175 PSI. We're going to go ahead and open it up. So there is limitations to pumps. You have to know how to size them correctly. Go to one, trying to balance it right at 160. That's close enough. So 160, we've got 8.8 .8 gallons per minute of flow. And there's our stream. It's actually not bad. Water's still nice and cold, so the pump, the pump is doing fine. It's staying nice and cool. Got a large 55 gallon drum of cold water. So let's do the math on this. 100 PSI. We're gonna come over here and see what's closest to that because we've got 60 PSI for a pressure switch. So we need to take off that much, which is 100. So that's going to put us somewhere between 200 and 300. So theoretically, the max pumping depth of this pump is 250 foot if you want it to actually operate correctly. But what I recommend on my website is to not put this pump any deeper than 200 feet. If you want to go deeper, then you need to go ahead and change to a different model of pump. All right, we're going to go ahead and kill the power. So I've got to say, this is the very first time I have used this test tank in this fashion. I have never done this off camera. This is the very first pump that I tested. The reason why I decided to test this pump was because one of my customers online actually just bought this pump and he asked me, he says, can you put it in a tank and test it? before you ship it out to me. I want to make sure that the pump runs before I get it and before I go through the hassle of putting it down in the well. So I asked him, no problem, would you mind if I made a video out of it? So he said, absolutely, make a video out of it. So that's the reason why I kind of jumped to the middle of my pumps and I decided to test this one horsepower 15 gallon a minute pump. And I have to say, I love the way that it turned out. We get all of the information that we want and that we need off the pressure gauge. And then we get to go to the flow gauge, which actually tells us what it's actually flowing in real time, which is awesome. I love that. Then we can come over here. We can come over to the flow chart that Grumpus gives us. And it's probably within like 3 or 4% of exactly what they're telling you that it's supposed to do. So they're not lying to you. They are telling you exactly what this pump is capable of doing. But you have to be able to read it correctly. You can't say, oh, the flow chart goes to 420 feet. That means the pump can go to 420 feet. That's not the case. Your system operates on 50 PSI. So you have to subtract that from that. 
because it has to operate under pressure once it gets into your house. So you have to add that to the head pressure. So I hope you can kind of understand that. I think I've I think I've explained that throughout the video. But if you don't understand that, if you see a pump that says maximum head pressure, or maximum depth, 400 feet, don't put that pump at 400 feet. It will not pump from 400 feet. It may give you water from that depth, but it will burn up. It will not shut off a pressure switch from that depth. The Viver pump back there, it had a maximum head of 360 feet, but it only built 124 PSI. That showed me that that pump's maximum capability of working was 240 feet. So even though it may supply a open-ended situation, like dumping into a cistern or filling up a, a barrel or something like that, it won't build pressure. So there's, there's two things there that you have to understand the difference. 95% of systems like this are all going to be under 50 PSI of pressure. So, that being said, the next pump that I'm going to be doing a test on is this one right over here. Now this I bought with my own money. The company did not send me this pump to where I can give an honest review. This is a half horsepower 37 gallon a minute, 4 inch, 230 volt pump made by Viver. I purchased this from Lowe's for $120. And there is a reason why I want to do a pump test on this well. <clears throat> because I have had two subscribers in the last two weeks buy the same exact pump. And they both sent me the same exact comment. They said this pump will not shut off my pressure switch. They said this pump will only build up to 43 PSI. Now, the reason why is because it's a 37 gallon a minute pump. It's not designed to go in a well at deep depths. This pump is more so for a cistern type system that does not have head pressure from hanging vertical in a well at a deep depth. And we're going to go into more detail on this pump in the next review video. So stay tuned for that. Well, thank you all for watching this pump test video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in anything and everything well pump related, if you're any interested in any of the pumps that I have behind me or any of the fittings that you see in any of my videos, please check out my website. That'll be listed in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video. I leave my email address in the bottom of the description along with a lot of other detailed information. If you need to get a hold of me, please send me an email and I have no problem helping anybody and everybody out. Thank you all for watching and have a good one.